security guard in Flint, Michigan, doing his job as a security guard at a family dollar store, family dollar tree store in Flint, Michigan, enforcing the face covering rules, gets shot and killed while performing his work. And from all accounts that I heard, he was a great, great man, family man, a good human being, a great person, and he lost his life enforcing the face covering laws. Um, we're going to talk about it. Guys, my name is Duty Ron. I'm a retired New York City police detective. I have 20 plus years law enforcement experience with the New York City Police Department, the largest police department in the world. And tonight we're going to speak about this senseless murder in Flint, Michigan at a family Dollar Tree store. Security guard was just simply doing his job. And for those of you who know me, I have spoken about this in the past, how we do not need to be getting involved in um, enforcing things that the police department and that law enforcement professionals, the job is, should be left to them. Uh, it's, it's the same concept when you speak about road rage incidents and road, road rage, um, never, never engage in any type of dispute over something that should be handled by police department personnel. And of course, the police can't be everywhere, but this is a tragic incident that happened in northern Michigan, Flint, in Flint, Michigan. It looked like a mother and daughter went into the family dollar uh, store to shop, and the daughter did not have a face covering. So the security guard confronted the mom and said, hey, your daughter needs a face covering to come in here. It's part of the rules. You got to follow the rules. She started spitting on him and acting all belligerent. Uh, she left the store. Uh, surveillance cameras showed her going into her car. She drove to her apartment complex a short distance away. And then 20 minutes later, her husband and his son came back, shot him point blank range in the back of the head outside of the store uh, and killed him on the scene. So we're going to, I'm going to show you a video, guys, of this. You guys could see um, the reason why me as a professional law enforcement uh, official, I highly, highly recommend that none of you ever get involved in any type of asking someone, to, why aren't you wearing a face mask? Why aren't, why don't you have a mask on? Hey, you should put a mask on. It's not our place to do that. If you have a face covering and you are protected, that's all you should be concerned with. You're not, you're not to go out, especially right now with the way that everybody's on the edge from being confined into home in the home everybody is you know dealing with different financial problems or different situations you don't know what anybody's going through so at this point right now and any point going forward i highly recommend that nobody takes it into their own hands to be the uh and act as a police official uh, nobody has to be the stop sign police, the speeding police, the reckless driving police. If you see someone driving recklessly or doing something that's against the law, you pick up your phone and you dial 911 and that's it. That's all you should do is pick up the phone and dial 911. That's your civic duty and that will save your life because as you'll see today, you'll see here, this security guard simply asked this woman to get a face mask for her daughter or leave the store, she left the store and she went back home and her husband and his 28 year old son came back to the store and shot and killed this guy for no good reason. So I'm gonna play a quick video for you guys so you, so you can get the story. If you, uh, as a disclaimer, if you suffer from any type of PTSD or anxiety and you can't look at things like this, this is gonna cover a little bit of graphic stuff. Uh, it involves someone that has lost their lives. I recommend that you step out of the broadcast at this time. And hello to all my channel members and all my Patreon fellow, uh, men and women that are in here and all of my supporters. Thank you, Katrina, for the super chat, that nine ninety nine super, super chat. Love. Appreciate the super love. Thank you, love Katrina. Love and respect. Heart, heart. Duty run famo forever. Heart, heart, heart. All right. Thank you so much for that, Katrina. We are following that breaking news in North City. An employee at a family dollar store on Cass Avenue has been shot in the parking lot. 
News 4's Alexis Zotos is live at the scene gathering the latest details. Alexis, you just finished speaking with a police lieutenant. That's right, Courtney. We are at Cass and Spring, the family dollar here. It's just north of Grand Center. A employee of this family dollar was shot dead in the parking lot about an hour ago. I'm going to step out of the way and let you see the scene here. This, of course, is all closed right now to the public. All right, I'm going to stop this just for a second. Jennifer Cristomo says security guards are hired to do this. Not saying it's right. Uh, I beg to differ with you on that. They're not hired to enforce uh, a, a regulation that was put in place by public officials. They're there to, in, to enforce shoplifting and any type of public disturbance. That's it. They're not there to enforce face covering rules. And they're not even laws, they're rules. So I beg to differ with you on that. And I, I, I love that you expressed your opinion there, but your opinion is wrong. Security guards are not there and it's not their job to enforce something that's being enforced by the state. Each individual state puts out the executive orders for face coverings and it's not a security guard's job to do this. He just took it upon himself to try to be a nice guy and say, hey, everybody else is following the rules. Just follow the rules. She took it on herself to spit in this guy's face and probably call him everything under the sun and then went home and told some crazy story to her husband that ra riled him up to the point where he came back over there with a gun and shot this guy in the back of the head, gangland style, and killed him on the scene. You'll see black um, barricade here where the police are doing their investigation, and that's where his body lays, right there beyond that black, um, uh, that black uh, barrier that they have set up. So I'm going to let this continue. Like the streets around it as well as the store. You can see they have the black partition up in the parking lot. That's where police tell me the shooting happened. They do not have anyone in custody. At the moment, they are looking for a red Dodge sports car. That's the description that they've given us as they're seeking the shooter in this incident. Now, they weren't able to tell us just yet if this employee was on his way into work, on his way out, or maybe just on a break. But we do know that this shooting happened in the parking lot in the middle of the afternoon. And that, I think, is the most just concerning part of this situation. Police are looking, of course, through surveillance, talking to any witnesses. The large scene of witnesses that have gathered around this store here just north of Grand Center. Police are not giving us any information about the victim at this time, not telling us the age uh, or the identity yet, of course, as they have to go through the procedures of notifying. Okay, so this again uh, is, a, is a staunch reminder that all of us should not take it upon ourselves to try to enforce laws. Now, I, I get that he was a security guard there in the store, and he was um, uh, a well-known person in the, um, in the community, as you'll see from my next little clip that I'll play here for you. Uh, many of the elected officials knew of this guy and knew how good of a guy he is. So um, you're going to hear other, other folk talk about how he was helpful to the community, how good of a family man this guy was. And um, to lose your life senselessly over arguing with somebody over a face mask, or trying to enforce a law that, you know, looking at this in Monday morning quarterback, it, uh, if he would have just called 911 and let the police handle the situation, uh, we would have had a different outcome here. But that's not what happened. So he figured he could just be nice and tell her, hey, listen, you got to get a mask for your daughter. And it just didn't go that way. It went, it went very ugly because everybody's on the edge here. We've all been confined for seven, eight weeks, some of us. And um, everybody takes this, this differently. And at the end of the day, this, uh, this man lost his life doing his job. And it's just a real sad, sad situation. I'm going to let the rest of this play out. The victim's family. But we'll bring you more as we learn it. For now, reporting live, Alexis Zotos. All right, so guys, I'm going to just set up the next clip. I want you guys to hear the charges that... Um, 
the Michigan uh, authorities are um, setting up murder first degree, which is life in prison for both the father and his son, and also uh, the the female, the mom that went in there. So all three, I think she, uh, I know she's under arrest right now. So um, here we go. This can't be real. <laughs> My babies need a daddy. Heartbreak and devastation as Latrina Sims Munnerlin grapples with the fact her husband of 10 years, Kelvin Munnerlin, is no longer here. I'm just suffocating. I feel like a knife is in my chest. This Munderland says Kelvin deceased. worked as a security guard at Family Dollar on Fifth Avenue in Flint for just over a year. On Friday, Michigan State Police say a man was shot in the head while on duty at the store, later dying in the hospital. This family says that was Kelvin. I just want to hear his voice again. DeMonte Munderland is Kelvin's oldest son and says his dad was always a protector, taking his job. All right, wait a second. So... Nobody's saying that anybody should call 911 if someone says they won't put their mask on. Okay, you guys are, well, one person here, Cheyenne's Petunias, is is saying, this is Flint, Michigan. 911 does not have time for mask violations. That's not what you would call 911 for. When you call 911 is when someone refuses to wear the mask and you, you don't step in. You just say, okay, no problem. Step aside, dial 911 on your phone, say, I have someone here that's in my store, I need to have them taken out. That's it. And if the police don't come, then you don't do anything more. There's no, hey, you gotta leave, hey, let me take someone by the arm and escort them out. Nobody knows exactly what happened here, but at the end of the day, this, this gentleman lost his life for doing his job. Joshua, thank you for the super chat. I appreciate that. But let's let the rest of this go job very seriously every time i call him look son i'm at work i'll call you back later he's always done security he's done security in nightclubs in the worst of the worst nightclubs and nobody still ever just thought to do my baby like that <laughs> the family and close friends say kelvin was known as a gentle giant someone you could confide in an all-around great guy he gave you the shirt off his back the food off his table he was the life of the party as this family is stricken with the loss of their husband father and friend oh god <laughs> they asked the community to carry on kelvin's legacy remember him as an amazing outgoing person i'm gonna try to live for him to pray for us that's all i just need y'all to pray for it. okay so yeah she was she was spitting on him uh you'll hear these next news reports she was um belligerent spitting on him and uh carrying on so, um, you know, at the end of the day, folks, you know, <laughs> stepping in to say, and, and really I wanted to do this video to tell everybody because I know there's a lot of people that I know that get really angry when they're out and they don't see someone wearing a face mask, right? But it's not your job to go and tell that person, hey, you should have a mask on because that could be what cost you your life, Okay. And in this instance, this is what happened to him. And he was doing his job. He was inside that store as the security guard. And all he did was to ask her to get a, a face mask for her, do for his, her daughter. Not he, she had one on. The woman had one on, but the daughter didn't. And he asked her to get one for the daughter or leave. And she, he made her leave. And that's when she became belligerent. So at the end of the day, I'm, I'm making this video so each and every one of you guys see, and I spoke about this about three weeks ago, I had a feeling that this was going to happen, and, and I, I have a feeling this won't be the last person to lose their life over arguing over face covering. If you have a face mask on, if you, you have a, a mask on, and you see somebody else without a mask, don't be a hero and tr try to tell that person what they should and shouldn't do because you never know who you're messing with and that's the bottom line that's the bottom line we are following that 
one more, one more. I just want to show you one more thing. All right, here's the news conference with the officials. I want you to see this. I'm going to scroll it forward. Also up with us is Kuhn. Uh, I'm Prosecutor David Layton, Genesee County. The prosecutor with me. from Flint. We have Lieutenant Pat Young from the Michigan State Police, Lieutenant Chuck Barker from the Michigan State Police, Detective Trooper Keith Bagansky, Michigan State Police, who's the officer in charge of this case. We have Chief Ray Hall from the University of Michigan Flint Department of Public Safety and Chief Phil Hart from the City of Flint Police Department. Uh, MSP's major crime unit led this investigation ably assisted by the U of M Flint and Flint PD and I want to at upfront acknowledge and thank all the departments for their efforts. Also up with us is Commissioner Bryant Nolden, Genesee County Commissioner Bryant Nolden, who is also the executive director of the Burston Fieldhouse, where the victim worked out. And at some point here, we're going to ask. Uh, Thank you all for Commissioner joining. Nolden Thank you. To come and talk a little bit about the victim. Let me uh, start off by saying that my office has authorized felony warrants against three individuals in the shooting death of Calvin Munnerlin. And uh, the first individual charged is Larry Edward Teague, Jr., date of birth, July 4th, 1975. Mr. Teague is charged with, on count one, first degree premeditated murder which is a felony punishable by life in prison without the possibility of parole. Mr. Teague is also charged with count two, felony firearm. That is, he did have in his possession a firearm during the commission of the felony. That is a felony. It's punishable by two years in prison, consecutive to any other sentence that is uh, given by the judge. Mr. Teague is also charged under count three with possession of a firearm by a felon that is punishable by five years in prison max. And count four, another count of felony firearm, two years consecutive to any other sentence. Our second suspect, uh, let me let me re uh, add that Mr. Teague is also charged with carrying a concealed weapon, felony punishable by five years in prison, and he is also charged with count six, violation of the governor's executive order mandating that all customers and employees must wear face coverings inside grocery stores. That's a misdemeanor punishable by up to 90 days in jail and or a $500 fine. Our second charged individual is Ramon Travon Bishop, date of birth January 13, 1997. Mr. Bishop is charged on count one with first degree premeditated murder punishable by life in prison without the possibility of parole. Count two, felony firearm. That's a felony punishable by two years consecutive to any other sentence. Count three, carrying a concealed weapon. Uh, that is a felony punishable by up to five years in prison. Our third suspect and charged individual is Charmel Lash, L-A-S-H-E, Teague. Date of birth. April 16th, 1975, she is charged with first degree premeditated murder, punishable by uh, life in prison. Okay, so she's in custody, as I said. Uh, the other two, the, the father and the son, are both life in prison when they're arrested. And again, my point of this video is not about how it goes in your neighborhood. It's not, the point of this video and the educational part of this is for us, 
as human beings to understand that taking a stance and taking a step to try to enforce something that is not your job to enforce can cost you your life. So if you are a civilian and you see somebody doing something or breaking the law or breaking the rules, as you heard, the executive order is punishable by a misdemeanor, which is a bullshit misdemeanor. I think you can get up to 15 days in jail maximum. You're going to lose your life over trying to enforce a law for somebody that's being ignorant. It's the same concept as when you have a reckless driver and you want to play games with that reckless driver by hitting your brake and hitting the brakes behind when he's behind you in hopes that the person is going to, you know, get nervous. That's that causes people their lives on a regular basis. This isn't about what goes on in your neighborhood or I live over here and that's not how it goes. This is a this is a learning lesson for each and every one of us to see this and say when I when you feel yourself getting to the point where you want to say something to somebody, it's not even worth it. It's not worth it. Just dial 911, give a description and walk away. And you and you'll live to tell another day. And that's what I'm saying. That's the that's the takeaway from this. Without the possibility of parole, count two felony firearm felony, two years consecutive to any underlying sentence. Suspects Larry Teague and uh, Ramon Bishop remain at large as we speak. Charmel Teague is in custody. The charges are based upon information uh, obtained by the investigators in the, this case. On May 1st, at approximately 2.14 in the afternoon, the Flint Police Department responded to the Family Dollar located at 877 East 5th. Let me just say one more thing, too. That was a good block by my wife. Um, that Cheyenne's pet Petunias, I don't even know who that was, but all of you guys could see, now when I speak about ignorance, when I speak about people that don't get it, that person didn't get it. And I'm not saying anymore, I'm not gonna say another word about it, but, and I don't expect any of you to say another word about it, but I'm just want you, I wanna give you another example of someone who just doesn't get it. And that I won't say anymore. Avenue in the city of Flint for reports of a shooting. Officers there located a black male who had suffered a gunshot wound to the head inside the Family Dollar store. Witnesses at the scene identified the victim as Calvin James Munnerlin, uh, male black, date of birth 815 of 76. Mr. Munnerlin was transported to Hurley Medical Center for treatment where he was pronounced deceased. Several witnesses in the family dollar said uh, Mr. Munnerlin had got into a verbal altercation with an unknown black female over not wearing a mask before the shooting had taken place. There is surveillance video confirming uh, that altercation. The surveillance video also shows that immediately after the altercation, the female entered a red GMC envoy, backed out of the parking spot, and left the store traveling west on Fifth Avenue, then north on Saginaw Street and into the River Village Apartments. The video shows the same vehicle returning approximately 20 minutes later. The vehicle is seen parked in the parking lot of the River Village Apartments, and an unknown black male exits in dark clothing. Witnesses on the scene said that two black males entered the store wearing dark clothing. One of the males was younger, one of the males was older. One of the black males started yelling at Munnerlin about disrespecting his wife. The other black male then walks up to Munnerlin and shoots Munnerlin. Both males then exit the store. Okay, so the prosecutor right there read in the statement that the husband, her husband's, her kid, 
her 28-year-old son brutally murdered the security guard. He just spelled out that this woman's son walked into that, that Dollar Tree, family dollar, and shot and killed that security guard. That's what he just spelled out. A review of suspect scene parked in the parking lot of the River Village Apartments and an unknown black male exits in dark clothing. Witnesses on the scene said that two black males entered the store wearing dark clothing. One of the males was younger, one of the males was older. One of the black males started yelling at Munnerlyn Listen. about disrespecting his wife. The other black male then walks up to Munnerlyn and shoots Munnerlyn. Both males then exit. Both charged with murder first degree. Both. And the wife as well. The store. A review of suspect Charmel Teague's phone confirms she called suspect Larry Teague's phone between the initial altercation and the shooting. Witnesses identified suspects Larry Teague and Ramon Bishop as the men who entered the store and confronted the victim and that Bishop shot the victim. Based on this, we believe we have probable cause for all the crimes charged today against the named suspects. As in any criminal case, the accused individuals are innocent until proven guilty in a court of law. Uh, lastly, and before I call on Commissioner Nolden to talk about Mr. Munnerlin for a minute, I want to say this, that the, the, the hostile tone that we have seen in recent days on television and in social it's media... My pro, it's my uh, uh, thumbnail. Permeate our Look at the society. thumbnail. It's both of them in ways we sometimes don't fully realize or anticipate. Decisions like staying home when we can, wearing a mask when going to the store, and staying a safe distance from those around us, these should not be political arguments. They don't necessitate acts of defiance, and we simply cannot devolve into an us versus them mentality. We really need to make a commitment as a community that we are committed to doing the things necessary to allow us to stay healthy and turn the page on this crisis altogether. And if not for ourselves, we should do this for Calvin Munnerlin, who has lost his life needlessly and senselessly. With that, I'd ask Commissioner Nolden if you wouldn't mind saying a few words about this gentleman who you knew from birth. I'm gonna keep my mask on. Um, Calvin was a great guy. Um, we have a weight room down at Burston that is free and open to the public. This gentleman used to come down there three to four times a week and he would train anybody who wanted to be trained free of charge. We have a senior line dance. the police commissioner. He would come up and he would dance with the seniors. He was just an all around good guy. And um, when, when I found out what he just said he would dance with the seniors. This is a guy who selflessly gave his time to the community, and this is what he gets for enforcing face coverings. What had happened to him, it really broke my heart because I know what kind of person he was. So I'm, I'm extremely happy that we have law enforcement here that are going to find these individuals, and I want to make sure that they be brought to justice because this was extremely senseless over our mask. Um, I just want to say um, we need to stop the senseless violence here in this community. Um, this was totally uncalled for. Um, he didn't bother a soul. All he wanted to do was take care of his family, and he always had his kids with him. Um, this is a, a real loss for this community and really.
it's a big loss for me as a as an individual and what he was doing for the folks in the community around Burston. Um, thank you very much. Okay, thanks. Okay. Uh, any questions? Yeah. Has this uh, female suspect been arraigned? I don't think she's been arraigned yet. No. But the. So the female suspect is the is the wife, the initial, the woman who went in there. So she's been arrested, charged with first degree murder. Uh, he, the reporter just asked him if she was arraigned, and he said he didn't think she was arraigned. Um, these questions going forward are just going to be from reporters. I'm, I'm not going to, we're not going to listen to all of these. But again, I can't overemphasize the importance of us learning from this tragedy. Let's learn from this tragedy. Uh, it's not about the guy, uh, this guy should have quit his job. And, you know, like the person that got blocked, I don't block many people. I, I block people for being disrespectful. I block people for, um, you know, uh, various other reasons. But th that block was, for me, was important and significant because it shows that how people don't actually absorb what you're trying to tell them. And um, people don't absorb the message. And we're right now living in, in a time that is not known. We never in a million years would have imagined we'd be living in the, in the state that we're in right now with the restrictions that we have. And as humans, as humans, we want to get out, we want to be out, and we want to be able to move freely about the country, right? But that's not the case right now. So there's a lot of things that people are feeling and doing right now that they wouldn't normally do, you know? So we need to think sensibly. We need to think in a clear and concise and safe manner. And I tell my kids this. I tell my friends this. I tell you guys this. I tell my family. I tell everybody this. Do not engage with a, a person that you don't know and try to say to them, you can and can't do this especially now, right now. But it, this goes for all the time. If somebody is trying to cut you off or trying to have an argument with you about something, just be the better person and say, okay, you're right, walk away. Unless the person is in your particular um, protected space, if someone gets into your space, then you have to defend yourself. But right now, you need to be very, very careful. You need to be very, very careful about what you do and pick and choose your battles. Because it could be the difference between life and death. And that's a fact. The, uh, the other two are at large. We're going to have uh, photographs of them for you that you hopefully will broadcast. Uh, the MSP fugitive team is out looking for them. They must know that they're being sought. Uh, they are armed and dangerous, but we, we will bring them to justice. Yes, sir. Can you confirm a little information about the, the victim who's the father? This is all about our library stuff. He's father of eight, married. Uh, what are some of those? I, I think he had six children with his wife, and there were three other children in the family for a total of nine. Okay. When you say they're uh, at large, is there uh, any idea where they might, might be? Is it possible he went to a nice restaurant area, maybe just here? Is there any idea of where they may have gone? Uh, MSP is was working on that along with the other police agencies, and uh, we're confident that we'll get them. And uh, Charnel, has she been cooperating um, with you guys? She's in custody. Um, she's been interviewed, but beyond that, I can't comment on what she may or may not have said. Okay. Uh, just, uh, just one more here. Um, is there, uh, this is obviously a court process, but uh, the, the drama right now, um, you talked about arraignments and surveillance. Is there an idea of how that might help with everything going on right now? Um, the, the courts are slowly starting to open back up, so I think. Everybody. All right, so that's the that's the end of that. I'm just going to find one more quick video because there was one more piece that I thought was interesting for you guys to see. Um, I, I bookmarked it. I just got to find it. Two seconds. All right, there it is. Let me just get it right. Uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to show the picture just so you guys can see because these guys are on the loose. So if you're in the Flint, Michigan area, if you're in the Michigan area and you see these people, if you know them, call 911. Do not 
you know, do not engage them. Do not, you know, I, I, I do this with extreme caution, but um, these are the two uh, father and son who are on the run right now. I'm hoping that they're brought to justice sooner than later. Uh, but these are them right here. Hold on. Let me get this. So that's as close as I can get it. Uh, if you look at my thumbnail, um, if you look at my thumbnail, the um, the thumbnail for this broadcast is the two of them, and it's a clearer picture. Um, he has nine children. Uh, this this animal, this savage, as I would call him, has nine children. So that's one of nine. Um, you know, the two of them, we're gonna, they're going to be arrested and put in jail for the rest of their lives, along with the mother. Um, she may be the only one that could plea out, the, that would maybe be able to plea out. Uh, again, this is a senseless crime that um, didn't need to happen. Um, and at the end of the day, my message is clear. My message is clear. As a professional law enforcement uh, retired detective, I do not recommend that anybody anybody get involved in any of this kind of stuff um what happened there with soul for music i look at the date not the news i mean to watch stuff yeah that was a mistake if someone can untime her out or i don't know how that goes but soul for music's a, a friend and um maybe that was a misread comment but uh she's she's a good friend and uh, I'm sure that was just a mistake. Anyways, uh, so again, uh, welcome into all of the channel members, all of my Patreon supporters, all of my moderators, and all the people here who are positively engaging in the chat. I greatly appreciate each and every one of you. Uh, I, I, my heart breaks for this security guard and his family. What a good person this guy was, and he lost his life over his job and this face covering uh, rule. Uh, enforcing or asking a woman to have her daughter put on a face mask cost him his life. And you know, for me, it's just a senseless act of violence. And unfortunately, these type of events go on throughout our country on, during normal times. Uh, so this is, this is not something that is, you know, the first time ever happening. But when we talk about uh, wearing face masks while inside a store, uh, while in public or whatever the case may be for your state, do not take it upon yourself to try to enforce these laws. Leave it up to the professionals. And if a professional is not there, if a professional is not there on law enforcement, if the police are not available, then walk away because you'll live to see another day. And that's my, that's my takeaway from this. And I, I had no plans at all to go live tonight, but it's important for me to try to you know, send out a, a, a PSA to uh, my friends out here that if you're not part of law enforcement and you're in, you don't know how to uh, handle yourself, you you do not confront anybody. You do not even even I don't do that. I wouldn't do that. So again, thank you so much for everybody being in here. Thank you for all the super chatters. Thank you for um, yeah. I thought it was a mistake. Um, she knows. She knows the deal. Um, there, Thank you to everybody that came on in and the people that always watch my videos and leave comments down below. If you're not subscribed to me here, please consider subscribing and hitting the notification bell. Follow me on Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter, all one word, Duty Ron. Join my Discord group, send me a DM on any of the social media, and I will add you to my Discord group. Hello, Thomas. Hello, Stephanie. Thank you for being in here. Uh, join my YouTube video share group. There's over 600 people in the YouTube video share group now, and my police and crime chat group on Facebook. Uh, between the two groups, there's over 1,200 members in there. Get on in and um, share in all with all of the content creators. All of my content creators are members of my Duty Ron family, the Duty Ron YouTube video share group, uh, and go and check that group out because it's a chock full of really good stuff. Guys, much love and respect from my house to yours. God bless the world. God bless the United States. And God bless each and every one of you. Thank you so much for joining, and I'll see you on the next live stream. Peace and love from my house to yours.